Uh, Jenny and I are uh, part of the Open Knowledge Foundation. Uh, so it's about disease. Disease requires knowledge. And um, this came out two years ago and points out that it is the information which is necessary uh, in the equation. We do not have the information uh, to tackle disease in the way that we need. The problem is it's actually published not to the world, but to academics. And the success of a journal is how few people can read it rather than how many. What happens to the poor countries? Well, the publishers, in their generosity, uh, give out uh, free electronic copies to the poorest countries. Remember, free, in this case, costs nothing. It's just putting it on the web. The cost is actually stopping people reading it. Open access journals are inevitable. They are very, very important at this point in time. We need to share the information, the research we do, however little it is, so long as it can have an impact on development, on people's livelihoods, and people's way of thinking. Larry Lessig, founder of Creative Commons, uh, gave a, a very compelling video at CERN earlier this year uh, where he gave the case of his daughter who had jaundice. He said, I want to read the medical literature. If I had had to pay, it would have cost $400. So 99.9% .9 of the world cannot read the literature. Uh, this picture is taken from something uh, that uh, I did two weeks ago at the invitation of David Rowan from Wired. It was a presentation at the Serpentine Gallery, and there is more of that uh, at the end of the program. So uh, these animals are angry about the uh, closed access of this. Um, they cannot get past uh, the paywall of greed. And what we're going to see is can we change this? So can we make uh, open research reports for each disease? And we're going to start with a hackathon uh, at the uh, start of December in London. Um, and here are some of the people going to be involved. And Graham is uh, chair of the CJD Patient Alliance. He's not a medic, uh, he's a, um, a surveyor. He has run this tireless for about uh, 10 years or something. He, you know, he's just pushing, pushing all the time for this information to be uh, available. Uh, question one is allowing members of the public free access to peer-reviewed scientific, technical, medical manuscripts a good thing. Question two, uh, if not, uh, why is it wrong uh, to allow lay people access to the literature? Uh, question three, hmm. uh, should publishers charge taxpayers to access research largely, but not always, uh, funded by taxpayers? Uh, question four, uh, open access is surely beneficial uh, for GPs, is it not? Do you agree or disagree? Uh, question five, uh, would a GP prefer to be handed, say, nothing, uh, media reports, uh, abstracts, or full-level articles? Uh, so the, the way that we are propose, proposing to go about this is with open research reports. Um, and they're essentially an online resource which are a single discovery point for a single disease that anyone can go to. The idea is to expose the corpus of open access literature. So we propose to use open bibliographic and citation data to essentially report on what is available. Our hackathon um, basically aims to look at using these openly available data sets um, to make things like a geographical display of where data is taking place. And so the idea is that you can click through any of these displays to actually get to the underlying research. We can add functionality, so we can use semantic searches. We can organize the research chronologically and spatially. We can look at where it's done, how it's done, and what the progress over time has been. Um, so an example, for instance, um, Simon Hayes' group at the University of Oxford um, have just mapped um, the world's endemicity of malaria. So an interesting thing to compare would be where is malaria endemic and where is research actually happening on malaria? This is where it's happening. The two ma maps do not match up, but there's a lot of funding effort going now into making sure that um, research on neglected tropical disease and other problems is, 
is highly funded in areas where it's actually endemic and where researchers perhaps have a better perspective on what is needed. And so, you know, the, having this data openly available means that you can compare the two and look at is, is perhaps funding actually resulting in more deliverable research. All this said, the hackathon will make its own strategy. It will help us reach all the stakeholders, ranging from the researchers, the students, and even farmers in the case of agricultural information and people on the ground, because we have enlightened farmers who go to the internet and read, and they will see this.